Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and good night, depending on what time you're watching this next episode from me, Avamance in the Life on Minecraft series. We are in a swamp. Sometimes things happen in a swamp that perhaps don't happen in some other biomes. Life on Minecraft isn't just all about animals. Sometimes other organisms become important too. And we're in this swamp because it is one of the areas that we can find something that doesn't grow everywhere, but has some very very important and special qualities. So yes, we are looking for fungus. Mushrooms have been in the Minecraft game right since the very start, 0.0.2a, that's pre-alpha. They grow in areas that are 12 or less light level, but they're very, very clever. Even at night time, you can't plant them down unless the area that they're planted in will have a light level of 12 or less during the day. Very clever fungus. They also naturally appear in mushroom farm rooms within the woodland mansions. However, if you've got podzol or mycelium, you can place them no matter what the light level is. You can also put both types in flower pots. And again, the light level does not matter. They spawn naturally in swamps and taiga and mushroom biomes, and they also spawn in the nether. They're also really, really good at spreading themselves around. If a chunk meets the necessary conditions for light levels and is in the right biome or area, a mushroom has a one in eight chance of spawning if it is a red mushroom and a one in four chance of spawning if it is a brown mushroom. And then it looks around itself. If there are fewer than five mushrooms in a three by nine by nine area, then it will grow. If there are five or more in that area, then it won't spread any further. There are two varieties of mushrooms. There is the common brown mushroom, and there is the little red mushroom. That does not include the wild giant mushrooms that we'll talk about in just a moment. They are two of only three organisms that all spawn naturally in both the overworld and the nether. The other one is the chicken. Giant mushrooms, red and brown varieties, can appear in dark forests and also swamps sometimes, but they are in massive numbers on the very rare biome that is the mushroom fields. Mushrooms naturally generate as the red variant. However, you can make a brown one. If you've got a channeling trident in a thunderstorm and you fire it at a mushroom, the lightning hits it and turns it brown. That poor little fella, he's got a little bit singed. Let's make another one. It's just too good. You'll notice that this one behind, because it was close to the first one, also turned brown. Now, mushrooms are a very interesting creature. They're just like a cow in many respects. So if you get a bucket and right click on them, you get a bucket of milk. That is quite normal. However, if you get a bowl and you milk them, you get a bowl of mushroom stew, which is a really good food. However, if you just want some mushrooms, you can shear a mushroom with your shears and they become a normal cow, giving you five of the mushroom color of the cow, whether it is brown or white. These poor two fellas here, look, they don't know what's going on. They used to be mushroomy, now they're not. You're cured. Brown mushrooms give out an almost imperceptible light level of one. If I bring up my F screen sync screen, you can see here that we have a block light level of zero. If I place a mushroom there, that block has turned to one. Remove the mushroom back to zero. Red mushrooms, however, have no such light level. However, you can create a giant mushroom in any biome you want. You just need to make sure the conditions are correct. So we have got a light level of less than 12. Therefore, that mushroom can be planted. If you get bone meal and you treat the mushroom with bone meal, it will grow into a giant mushroom and it doesn't matter where you are. This is a really good way of creating a mushroom farm. You can mine out these huge mushrooms very quickly with an axe and if you do you get red or brown mushrooms dropped depending on the variety of mushroom that it is so this one huge mushroom here has given me 16 no oh, no i've missed some 19 red mushrooms i can then plant one of those back in and regrow it again it's a really good way of getting lots of mushrooms 
However, if you've got an axe with silk touch on it, you can do something a little more interesting because you can gather the actual mushroom blocks themselves and they can be used for either building materials or other compostable items and you get a different block for the stalk. You'll notice, however, you don't get any mushrooms. I'm in my little base with my campfire and I want to make myself some food. Now what's great about mushrooms is they are a part of some really useful recipes. First off, let's take out a spider eye, some sugar and a mushroom. That's going to give us a fermented spider eye. Fermented spider eyes are quite an important part of potion making. Don't eat it though, do not taste very nice. Next up, we have got one of each mushroom and a bowl. If I put one of each of those mushrooms there and the bowl underneath, that gives us mushroom stew. Now, a bowl of mushroom stew, when you eat it, will restore six of your food bars. That is a significant food stuff. That's two food bars better than cooked beef. However, if you come in and take these ingredients, and pop them into your crafting grid just like this. Rabbit at the top, bowl at the bottom, potato in the middle, carrot on the left, and then either mushroom, doesn't matter which one, on the right. You get rabbit stew. And rabbit stew will restore 10 of your hunger bar. Now you could eat the separate ingredients and restore 13 of them, but actually it's a lot easier for storage for rabbit stew. There is one really interesting food that we haven't talked about yet. If you take one of each mushroom and a bowl and different flower types, you can make something else that's very interesting. Put the mushrooms in like this grid and then perhaps take an allium and pop it there. We have got a bowl of suspicious stew. Now it's suspicious because it can have some strange effects. Now there are many different effects that you can get from Suspicious Stew apart from regenerating six bars of hunger. For example, the Allium will give you fire resistance for four seconds. The Oxide Daisy will give you regeneration for eight seconds. The Poppy will give you night vision for five seconds. And the Wither will give you the Wither effect for eight seconds. But I wonder what the Azure Blue is going to do. Shall we have a look? I am a little bit hungry after all. <gasps> Hang on, I've gone blind. I've gone blind. Phew, thank goodness that blindness only lasted eight seconds. So many applications for this wild and wacky fungus in Minecraft. Next time you wander past the humble mushroom, just remember this video and think how many different things you can do with it. If you have enjoyed this video, please do remember to slap that like button. It'd be great to know you're enjoying it and I will keep on making them. Also, if you've not done it already, please do hit that subscribe button. It'd be great to see you in my sub club and I look forward to seeing you in another video. You take it easy now. Bye.